Hey, this is Katie from Crafting Ruby Dreams, and today I'm talking about burnout, that New York Times article on languishing, and the role of therapy, Clifton Strengths Coaching, and Club Moxie in me moving out of the transitive state that I've been living in for over a year. Normally on my channel, you can find me talking about planners, goal setting, writing, publishing, and getting right with my finances, so I hope you will check out the rest of the videos on my channel for those topics, but I did a video on burnout a couple of months ago that seemed to resonate with people. So I thought I'd give both an update and especially a deeper understanding of what I am doing to move out of this funk that I have been living in mentally for the last year plus. It has been frustrating as heck for me and I put in a comment last night on a post that was talking about that New York Times article about how I am tired of being tired. It is, I'm tired of being in burnout. I am tired of being in pandemic fatigue. I am just fatigued of everything. So that was a revelation in some ways to me that I have been at that state, but it's also very true. And it's been good to realize that that is the mindset that I have been in, in that it also feels like having that realization during the week that the New York Times article came out, and I keep saying the New York Times article, and let me give you the actual details on that. The title of the article is, and I'm looking down at my computer, so I apologize for looking away from the camera. There's a name for the blah you're feeling. It's called languishing. And the article is by Adam Grant, who I believe is a psychologist. His bio is at the bottom of the article if you're interested. I will link to the article below in the description, but know that the New York Times does have a paywall, so you may or may not be able to access it. I would recommend getting a library card if you don't already have one and seeing if your library does have access to New York Times articles through a direct subscription with them or through a database subscription because I think it is a very important article to read if you are dealing with burnout in general but also dealing with pandemic fatigue and maybe like me you're dealing with both. I have seen this article float through all of the various communities that I am a part of. I can't even remember at this point where I first saw it, but I did see it on the day that it first posted, which was April 19th, and I have seriously seen it go through all of my various communities. And it has just resonated with so many people I know, and I think it is a good description of what many of us have been feeling collectively as well as getting further insight as to how we may be feeling and dealing with our own mental health individually. I honestly don't remember what I specifically talked about in my burnout video from a couple of months ago but again feel free to check it out because I know that that resonated with a number of the people according to the views I got on it. But burnout for me has been something that has been building or going deeper or whatever analogy you want to use, but it has been growing and worsening since about 2016. I think I can roughly pinpoint 2016 as the time period when I first started feeling burnout. And it was primarily in my writing career and feeling stuck with what I was doing and not seeing success with what I was doing. So that was just one, not small by any means, but it was one area of my life. It was not my day job, my day career. It was not my family life. It was not my personal friendships or anything like that, but it was a significant area of my life where I was starting to feel a bit burned out. And then it got compounded, frankly, by the fact that later in the year, my grandmother passed away and then we had the election of an administration that I am so glad to see the back of, even though I know that as a country we will be dealing with the consequences, both direct consequences and indirect consequences of the actions that they took. And it was just, there's a lot that we have to deal with. And it didn't help that I happened to live in DC. And so as somebody who is very in tune with the emotions of the people around me and living in a city where this is basically the center of the administration because 
it is. It's the capital of our country, my country, and it is just a lot to deal with. So that compounded the burnout that I was feeling in the more specific part of my life. And then I took on a leadership position that put me more directly in the path of emotional and professional burnout with regards to the writing aspect of my life. And it just blew up. And I was I was down in, deep into burnout. And I recognized that in the fall of 2019. And then after a particular crisis point, I had started making plans of what I was going to do to take a break from the writing profession. And because I knew I needed it. And then the pandemic hit and it was just like, okay. And it was something that I had seen building in the news. And it was something that when they said, all right, sending you home for two weeks. And I'm like, mm -hmm. sure, two weeks. Mm. So those initial two weeks have turned into over a year. And <laughs> I'm so pleased when this video posts, I will have a week until my second vaccination shot. I am so looking forward to it. I know that we are moving forward into the light, but we are taking tiny steps. So that pandemic fatigue and dealing with the consequences of missed opportunities of dealing with this on a more national level, and that's all I'm gonna say about that, has been tiring. And the fact that I was also dealing with burnout, very deep burnout, feels, it's like, it's hard, when you think about compound interest in financial terms, how it grows over time, it, like you, grows your money. It's like, this isn't just compounding, this is exponentially exploding. My state of mind, and honestly, the only reasons that I feel as stable as I do are because one year ago, I started working with my coaching group for Clifton Strengths, and that helped move me down the road to feeling like I was in control of some part of my life. It was not a panacea. It was not a cure-all because I'm, I'm not magically fixed by any means. But working with the Better Faster Academy and learning more about my strengths helped give me insights as to how to develop myself and feel like I understood myself better. And on top of working with them, I also started therapy with a licensed therapist in June of last year. And that was something I had been meaning to do for a while. And I finally was able to find somebody who I appreciated what was said on the practices website about what their focuses were and what I appreciated what the focus of the practice was and also frankly took my insurance so i am very privileged that i have insurance that pays for therapy so i'm so thankful in working with the clifton strengths coaching group better faster academy and taking courses from them as well as being part of their patreon community at a level that allows me to participate in monthly group coaching calls as well as everything that they do for free in their facebook groups and other areas of their online work have allowed me to progress. But last night when I saw the post on the Better Faster Academy's Patreon, which is a uh, Becca sign, S-Y-M-E, Becca posted about the languishing article and kind of did a deep dive. And it just really struck me. It really hit me that I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm sick and tired of being in burnout. But I also know that I can't just magically turn better. I'm not gonna magically go back to the point that I was since it took years for me to get to the point I am. And I am frustrated. I am angry to a degree. I'm still dealing with the emotions of the crisis point from last year that they are able to like go underground for a bit, but there are times that they just bubble. I'm like, I want to swear up a storm. So I've also found a lot of help in working in my Moxie Life Planner. It has been so useful to me. What I've been doing for the last few weeks, which I point out in my day in the life 
video from Tuesday that was just posted is that for the last few weeks, instead of doing full creative memory planning in the weekly spread, I am just doing daily writing down what has happened in the course of the day and mainly highlights since there's not that much room and then highlighting them according to what area of life they fall into so that I can look back at that and see if I'm feeling lack, why is that? Is it because I have overloaded myself over the whole course of the week on one area of life that is not or should not necessarily be a main focus for me for the week. I'm not looking for overall equal balance by any means because life is not equally balanced. But am I feeling at peace with what the week was or am I feeling unbalanced in some way. So it's giving me reference points and data to analyze. With all of that, I've been feeling like, despite the work that I've been doing with the Better Faster Academy and with my therapist, that there's something missing. And so I wasn't quite sure what it was, but one of the things that I knew about this year is that I needed to go with the flow more and just kind of deal with the fact that I am in a transitive state, both physically as well as mentally. I am dealing with what is essentially a midlife crisis, and I was already pretty much at that point prior to pandemic. And as I've said, pandemic just exponentially exploded all of my feelings bigger, as well as the fact that I came home right before Thanksgiving to my parents intending to spend six weeks here. I have now been here for five and a half months and I will be here through the end of July at the very least and possibly another month beyond that depending on if my office decides to once again extend the ability to do distance telework but I have essentially gone from six weeks intended of being here to nine months close to nine months. So that's a lot of time that I was not planning on doing. I'm very happy to have done it because this has been a really good situation for me to be with the mental state that I've been in as well as being able to be close to my family during this period of time. Uh, I know it has been helpful to my mom. Uh, I know that she is more at peace with having me close. I know that I have benefited so much from being able to see at the very least my uh, younger family members on a somewhat regular basis and develop deeper relationships with them and not just be the distant aunt off in DC that they see at the holidays maybe or whenever. <sighs> but I want to move on from this at the very least transitive mental state. I'm, I'm, I'm fatigued from that. I'm beyond fatigued from it. And so I decided to sign up for Club Moxie, which is an opportunity to get deeper with Sierra Friend, who is the founder of the Moxie Life Planner and is a certified life coach. And so it is going to be going deeper into things. It's not really focused on goal setting or goal planning or anything like that as much as digging in deeper to what I truly want to be doing, which is something that I have been wanting to do, but not really feeling like I have been able to do. I don't think I've had the stamina to do it, frankly, and the courage to do it, frankly. If you're at all interested in Club Moxie, I will link to it below and you can see what the curriculum is going to be. They do close their doors on April 29th to registrations. It's a six month program and it is going to be only available at this time. And they're not going to open the doors again for starting in June. You start May 1st or you don't start at all. This is a for now one time thing. And frankly, if something comes back, it's probably going to be a different program at that point because Sierra has designed this specifically for the time that we exist in at this moment and all of the pressures and feelings that we are all dealing with. And to me, just felt connected with reading the languishing article earlier this week and seeing what the curriculum for Club Moxie was going to be. It's basically directly addressing those feelings. So it was not something I had financially planned for, but this is one of the things that I will make this work because I know this is exactly what I need for my mental health, for my self-care at this point in time. And it's 
what I've been looking for without knowing I was looking for it. I am looking forward to reporting back on how I am progressing with Club Moxie and what my plans are for the future for myself because I basically, I've been, one of the reasons why I've been stumbling kind of in the dark in a way was because I can't figure out what I want my next phase of life to be. I'm going to be turning 44 this summer and I'm not where I expected to be at this stage of my life from when I was younger. I had great plans of being a published author with a successful career. I'm like, well, I'm published author and I've had some success to a degree, but not the kind of success that I envisioned when I was younger in that my career has not been stable. I am not routinely publishing and I am not making money from publishing at all. I'm also not married like I thought I was going to be. I don't have kids like I thought I was going to have, but at the same time, I've had a lot of really great things happen in where I work for the day job is just been my dream job that I never knew existed until I saw the posting for it. I am living in a city that I did want to live in for a little while because I had been able to see it both as a kid on family trips and then uh, while going through the area to go to a gathering that I would routinely go to. Yeah, it's my, my life. Well, in some ways, fabulous and great and I love it. It's also not anywhere close to what I had imagined when I was kid. Being at this point where I have time to pause and reflect on where I have come from and where I want to go and figuring out where I want to go. What what do I do next? I I don't know what I want to do next. I truly am, have been struggling with it. That's part of the burnout is trying to figure out what do I want to do next? And since I don't know what the end destination is that I want to attempt to go to, I have no idea what my next stops are. I really don't. And that's that's scary. That's what's truly scary to me because I, I have nothing to guide me forward at this point. I need to figure out what those guiding ideas are. I'm not expecting them to be the things that I reach at the destination necessarily because like I said, I'm not at the destination I expected to be 10, 15, 20 years ago. Well, 10 years ago, maybe it has been almost 10 years since I moved to DC. But even then, I still had certain ideas as to my writing career. I would very much like to have something to work towards, to have something that is moving me forward that is getting me energized about moving forward and giving me impetus to move forward. That is what I'm hoping Club Moxie does for me, helping me go deep and figuring out what what is it that I want to be the guiding idea. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to, honestly, is meeting and developing deeper relationships with new people. I have been part of the planner community for a about a year now, at least the greater broader planner community beyond the small little subgroup in the romance writing community that I had been in. So I'm really looking forward to getting deeper with the planner community and getting to know people who I've interacted with a bit in my journey to today. I'm not going to any planner conferences for at least the next 18 months because I have other priorities for next year and the biggest priority is getting my finances in better order because I know what it costs to go to basically romance fan conventions and I think those are roughly on the same scale at least money-wise as going to something like Go Wild. If the opportunity to go to a local DC area planner conference comes up, I might take that because then it's not going to cost me as much for travel and maybe I can do it for just one day. We'll see. But I get a lot of joy out of meeting new people. I get a lot of energy out of meeting new people and conferences are a way to do that, especially because I, I get the biggest burst of energy when I can do it in person. Virtual conferences are great. I have greatly enjoyed the access virtual conferences have given us, but I need that in-person experience experience as well. Not instead of necessarily, but as well as the virtual experience. I'm hoping something like Club Moxie will be able to give me that opportunity for deeper connections within the community because I plan on being around for a while at the very least. I'm going to close this out 
before I turn it into an absolute sobbing mess from everything. But I hope this has given you some insight as to what I'm dealing with for burnout, as well as fatigue due to both pandemic and frankly burnout. So if you are dealing with that as well, I hope you will consider doing therapy if you are not already with a licensed therapist. Uh, consider doing something like Clifton Strengths coaching or some other personal development coaching. And if you're at all interested in Club Moxie, this is posting on April 27th. The doors close on April 29th. The cost is going to be $295 for a one-time payment. Or if you want to budget your money, you can do a monthly payment for the six months and it's going to be $59 a month. It's not $295 with $59 on top of that. It's just $295 one time or $59 per month. You do save a bit of money by doing the $295 one time payment, but you know your finances best. Feel free to drop any questions for me down in the comments. If you found anything in this video useful, please hit that like button. And if you are not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified about future videos. I will have links to all of the information in the description below. And I thank you so much for your support of me. And just as a reminder, some of the links down in the descriptions are affiliate links and I do receive a small commission from them, not from Club Moxie. I am not an affiliate for them, but I appreciate any affiliate links you do choose to purchase from. Thank you so much for joining me here today and may all your dreams be Ruby dreams. Bye-bye.